Yeah, I start from your word, overwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many of you ever felt puzzled by the complexity of the context they were in? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> like, this is really too much to understand. Where is the north here? Where, where, where is up? You know, that's a very common feeling. Right? And I think we are often, you know, the development is a complex matter. It's, a, it's intercultural. You have people from Europe, from America, from various people from Africa, from Latin America. It's inherently intercultural. And it's also transdisciplinary, meaning that you have people coming from the techie side, you have administrative staff, you have lawyers, you have um, all sort of technician engineers, everyone coming in with a different perspective and not always understanding each other. Here, the fact that it's a woman speaking to a man is completely accidental, of course. And, <laughs> and then it's socio technical because nowadays, really, we cannot go without a technology part into it. So, socio technical meaning that technology has these characteristics to be able to change the social practices in the context where it is introduced. So, how to get on hold of this complexity and making sense of it. Because it's very easy to feel like we are on the bottom of a hole, where we see clearly what's closed on the walls of this, of this hole. It's like in a clearance where you see the trees around, but we need to a way to lift ourselves up, to raise above and see the wider context from there, so that we can connect the dots. Because it's not the single batch of data that's a problem, it's just to make the links and draw out a meaning out of it. And that's exactly what NetMap is meant to do. That's the core goal of NetMap in a nutshell. Before drilling into the method, forgive me, I'm a geographer almost, and I want to spend a minute on the advantages of having a map. A map offers a simplified version of reality. It gets rid of what's not <coughs> necessary. Look at the tube map in London. You know, the only thing you have here is the information you need to move to the goal, to the destination you want. Everything else is superfluous, you get rid of. It's also versatile because you can use a map both qualitatively to orientate yourself, you know, you have a compass or a you know, direction, but also to measure distances. You have a scale, you know, and that's quantitatively, so to speak. It's a common reference. Everyone knows that north is up on a map. And this is empowering because once we agree that that's the framework, then we can move in a coordinated action towards our goal. A map makes the invisible visible. Here you have temperature. You cannot see temperature, right? Unless you have such a map. Exactly the same that happens with relationships. Relationships do not have a physical counterpart. They have no matter, but they do matter, don't they? And having a map, I can make sense. And when I th say make, I really mean craft, fabricate sense, like, like, a, like this craftsman. It's really something that allows you to pull up, to make sense. And once you do that, you can learn. Here is a stereogram. If, if you know the technique, you can see a 3D object coming up here. Mm -hmm. So it's a new dimension that is added to the regular one. And when you see the third dimension that the map provides, then your attitude, your behavior will change accordingly because you take into consideration other things. Net, how, how does this translate in the method of net map? It's trying to visualize what's going on in the social network. You do that by first identifying a core issue, a core question, in the form of who influences this and that. That's the core here. We have to look at the influences button. And I say influence, I don't say power, for a specific reason. Because power is so abused as a term, so loaded of 
connotations and previous meanings that if you bring in the power term, all of a sudden people will back off scared and say, you know, are we talking about formal hierarchy here uh, or whatever? Influence is still a more, it's a less loaded term. Then once you have the question, you start asking your stakeholders to identify themselves by using this little, in my case, I, I ask a, a Burundian craftsman to, to carve these for me. So these little figurines. Um, Eva Schiffer, in the first exa example, in the first use of NetMap, used that because she was dealing with people that were illiterate, so they could not read the post-it notes with the name of the actor. So she had decorated all these figurines so that if you could distinguish the head of the village from his wife, uh, you know, not <coughs> knowing how to read and write. But these are not uh, essential, you know. The third thing you do is you draw the links in terms of command, so who is in a position to give orders <coughs> to whom, or in terms of money, who is paying whom, or in terms of training, who is training whom. These links are not fixed, it's just something that is relevant for that specific context and you will have to choose which one is important. It can be information flow, can be who is giving advice to whom, can be who is giving support, assistance, whatever. Then, once you've done that, you ask your stakeholders to explicitly say what do they think the priority of each stakeholder are. And as a facilitator of a NetMap exercise, or as a researcher, or as a consultant, what you try to do is not limit yourself to the first answer, which is the mission statement on the brochure of the organization, but is try to really go deeper and catch what are the fears, the worries, that might prevent these people to buy in and take part actively to the project. Because as economist Tresky and Cameron told us in the prospect theory, people are risk averse. People are much more worried of losing what they have, especially if they have a position of power, than to jump into a venture that could lead to greater advantages. So unless you first reassure them that they don't have to fear anything, you don't move much forward. So that's what I call the hidden agenda. So that the minus three, minus two, minus one priorities that you have to fulfill before getting into the, the goals officially stated in, in, uh, in the project. Once you've done that, you are in a position where you can wisely and precisely assess what is the relative influence of each actor to achieving that specific goal that was stated at the very beginning in the question. And you do that by putting this little disc beneath each actor and the higher the tower, the higher the influence as is perceived, of course. And of course, if you do this in different groups with different people, we'll have different heights and, and that's all the, the juicy bit of it. So, once you've done that, what you obtain is, is this. Let's see the, the different phases. So first, the stakeholder, of course, there was a question before. Then you start drawing the links, and you use different colors for different links. Then you go to assess the influence. And finally, the, the goals. Uh, here you see that I swapped the last two before I told you first the, the, the priority and then the influence now. So, the order I used was the, the original one that even Eva used, but then with our experience you realize that you get a better understanding of the influence once you have made a reflection beforehand on what are the goals of the different actors towards in that specific project. So my advice to you would be first elicit the goals and then going to the influence assessment. Now, a key feature of NetMap is its versatility. 
You can use it for strategic planning, you can use it for monitor evaluation, you can use it to diagnose a certain situation as a researcher, you can do plenty of things. And you can do it on your own, in your desk, uh, at night, one day, because you want to figure out, okay, now I feel overwhelmed, let's put things clearly on the, ground, on, on, on the desk and see who influences, for example, the success of my PhD. Okay, that's my supervisor, that's the university administrator, that the people I was researching on, etc., etc., etc. And then I put them on there and have a clear view. You can use it as a field method uh, to generate narrative in a one-to-one -one interview. And the narrative that will come up from such an exercise will be very different from what you get with a regular tra uh, traditional interview because of the graphical. Because people are not used to draw and get kind of, you know, uh, shaken by, by that. It's especially if you work an uh, interview with <coughs> status ministries or whatever that are, that are used to give interviews and to face journalists, they have all their preset of answers, what can they just warm it up a bit and then serve it to you so that you are happy that they hope they match your expectations. But then when you ask them to draw, they're not as skillful and self-conscious with their hands. So you might see them doing that and then you ask them, is it now what I say? You know, just they have, it's more honest in a way. It gets the politically correct get uh, out of the way when you do this to a certain extent, of course. You can use it in groups, associations, <laughs> a, a grassroots movement. Uh, they have to decide to do a project and they tune through the map their different perception. So uh, before the gap was there, now we, we equalize and we'll never be on the same line, but still we can arrive, we can arrive to a quite shared vision, especially if you come from different backgrounds in terms of disciplines, etc. And then if you have a very complex project with a lot of people, you can do subgroups and then compare maps about the same thing. And when the discussion starts and you see, why did you put this so much power to this guy and not so much to that one? Why is that? <coughs> in my case, I was working in Burundi uh, with uh, the European bilateral project, setting up computer labs in schools. And I had to train the teachers to be able to not only set up the computer labs, but also administer them afterwards to keep them functional. Okay? So that was the first meeting, 30 people, some from the ministry, some from the school. And in one group, he had the, first, the most charismatic was a guy from the Ministry of Education. And in the other groups, there were more teachers. So the difference was that in the table, in the map of the guy from the ministry, the goal was we have to set up a network of computer labs nationwide. That's the goal. For the other was, I have to set up a computer lab in my school. So the two were not one against the other, they were just complementary. One was local and you need both to do both. But having that so clearly stated allowed me as a facilitator and as a trainer for them to make clear, no, guys, we want to have a network nationwide. And the other thing that struck me was, in some cases, the, the, in the case of the two teachers, the one who was perceived as the strongest in influence was, of course, the European Cooperation Agency was putting the money in the computer in, this, in the system. Whereas for the guy in the ministry was, no, no, we are in charge because we have to go and look long term what happens when this project is over and we have to take this, to take care of this, to keep it functional. So again, not to have two con conflicting uh, perception, one was long term, one was short, medium term. And by this discussion I could make clear to them, look guys, these are just two patches that go together. But for me as a facilitator, the most interesting thing was that being all teachers, they were coming up to me as the facilitator and saying, you know, no, 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 our map is the real one. No, 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 this, this is, we need, we deserve the, the highest note, the highest mark, you know, because we comply best with what you ask us. <laughs> so to me, 
as a facilitator, it was I changed what I had to plan to do the, the following day because I said, no, guys, we have to understand that this is not a game of getting the best. No, this is just to understand the process. So I, I, I understood how their teacher's mentality was overriding everything I was doing. And so I, I decided to address that first to, before moving on into the project. So, what are the requirements to run Netmark? If you want to try it out yourself. Well, look at, at this little video. I mean, if you have the possibility, it is best to, to be a couple. One being the facilitator. I don't know why it's so slow. And sorry about that, I don't know why. <laughs> and why is that? Because if you are the one drawing, people have to be very clear telling you why you need to do that. On the flip side though, if you let people do it on their own, you might have a more messy result, but also a more earnest one that's coming from, from them. But then you need a note taker. Maybe, I don't know why this is coming up uh, that badly, but anyway, here is, this is Eva. Uh, someone who is not caught in the online, it's an ongoing, sorry, conversation, this is not asking questions, clarification, etc. Something that is a little bit of a distance and can observe the process while it's going on. Why we got stuck into this? Why? Where was the highest, the heatest debate here? Why this stakeholder came up only at the very last minute, whereas it's so important? Why was it forgotten? This kind of question, you cannot take into consideration when you're doing it as a first hand facilitator. Well, if you don't have the luxury to be a couple, then you can use an inanimate note taker, like a, like a, a camcorder. And I recommend, though, by experience, not to rely too much on that because it's an illusion thinking that you can, with a camcorder, capture everything the audio, the video, and then you have the full experience again available to you next time. It's just one angle. If you catch the map, you don't catch the expressions of the people, you don't catch their, and they carry a lot of information. So complement that with digital snapshot with your camera so that you can then slice it up and say, okay, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Pictures as much, are much easier to handle than when you have to report you can print them on paper, you cannot print a video obviously. And a video is also very time consuming to go through when you do it uh, in the analysis phase because you don't know where to look at. Then in terms of material, as I said, uh, this was the first NetMap toolbox ever, so they used some bicycle bearings that you can find in any uh, bicycle market in Africa and, and these little figurines. As I said, I asked uh, and you don't need to do it for me. Uh, you can buy the, the NetMap toolbox, which is this that contains this little bag. Let me show you. Uh, on the website with this, and then you have some, some markers, some little things, and the CD with, with also all the references. But, you know, it's just, if you don't have the time to go around and look for this, then you might prefer to buy this. Otherwise, just use fantasy. I mean, with a friend of mine, we had, I had this at home, then we decided to use candles to do the towers. I mean, the figurines are really an option. You don't, uh, Rudolf used the, the, the glasses, you know, just use your fantasy. It's, it's not that big deal. Then post it, we can find everywhere. Now, Let's say we've done a test, how we go about analyzing the maps. But there are things that come up almost immediately, straightforward. You see, in this case, after having done the map, <coughs> I put some green arrows stick on top of the, the Burundian stakeholders, and, and these were the European stakeholders. And clearly, the power was perceived to be there by this guy. This guy was at the rural level, okay? So really working in the school. And I think it's hard to find another method that allows you to give such a, a one-shot 
picture of how the power is distributed in the network. Even for reporting purposes, for example. Of course, it's perceived. I mean, don't take it objectively, but it's, it's interesting to see, especially if you think about ownership, aid effectiveness, and all that. This is what I call graphical honesty. I mean, this was a ministry uh, official that I was interviewing, and I couldn't go to the point of doing the whole thing, you know, to the to the influence tower. I, I didn't have enough time. He didn't allow me to stay there enough time. But so I gave myself to the links, and, and only the formal hierarchy. But it's clear that this little link here oh, sorry, is not something that will come up so evident in, in the flow of his speech. This is that something critical between these two actors. And as a researcher, as a consultant, I want to dip, go deeper into this and question why did you this, do this? And, you know, it was a kind of a politically incorrect thing to say for him, but with the hands, it could in a way, or he wasn't even so self-aware that he was doing this, but he let me understand that's where the problem is. And that's the, the graphical honesty, so to speak. Now, okay, you might say these are these nice uh, cues, but how do I handle the, the spaghetti bowl? The terrible spaghetti bowl. Uh, you know, this is really confusing and complex. How do you do this? Well, luckily there's Technology will save us. <laughs> this visualizer is a software that allows you to translate the map. That, that's exactly the map we were seeing before on the computer. So with all the links, you know, you go, tick one, you enter the other one, and let, uh, until you get to this point. And of course, the size of the bubbles here is uh, relative to the height of the tower. So these are the most influential ones. Okay, you say, well, point of a progress, but still, isn't it still quite messy and complex? Yes, it is. Then visualizer allows you to highlight one layer of links, for example, hierarchy, observe that while hiding the others. And then you say, okay, that's the structure, you see it's very much the European, these are the Brunus, and quite you know, distinct. Then you look at the training, and it's clear here that Europeans are training all the Burundians, and there's no reverse training here. Why is that? I mean, is, is a European going to Burundi uh, fully fledged, uh, knowledgeable about Burundian culture? No, but there's no training the other way. So, by studying this, by comparing, maybe combining different layers, you can understand what's the structure of the network and find some breakpoint. In this case, this is from, from Eva's work. Um, here you had a link between a network that was like polarized. And when this guy is ill or is on holiday or is not there, the communication break, the path breaks down. So when you have a chance to, to see that from up above, you can also intervene and say, we need a second channel here because that's too fragile. We are relying too much on this. You, you can see typically the hub and spokes network where there's a guy or a, a, a subject that is the pivot of everything and the minute it is not available anymore, everything collapses. So this awareness allows you to change the way the, the network works. Now, if you have passion for numbers and you need to translate this uh, because you know we know that uh, bosses like numbers and bureaucrats like numbers <laughs> you can back up what you get out of the, the qualitative analysis of the net map by some social network analysis measures like centrality which is the number of links uh, in or outbound relating to a certain subject or you can look at betweenness, which is how many times a certain individual is in the path connecting two other individuals in the net. Or you go look at closeness, which is 
how many, which is the actor that has the least number of steps to reach every other actor in the net, or eigenvector, which is basically centrality for lazy people, <laughs> meaning that this guy has, has no many links, but is well linked to people that have many links. So in so he gets the benefits of, of being linked. Um, so as I said, this software gives you a number <coughs> to measure all of these, and this looks pretty and scientific. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all I wanted to tell you in, in this brief time to give you the chance to tell me what your perception is like you know, first time. If you want to have more information, you go to WordPress, netmapwordpress.com, which is a one-stop uh, site for it. And if you prefer, you just drop me a line at my email so that I can help you the way I can, you know, give you my experience on that. Thank you.